So we are talking about community building circles as one of the foundational pieces and restorative practices that you would do with your class. Um, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run a circle, really reflecting on what you just saw in the video. And this is um, really to model that you can do a, a circle virtually if you, if you want to make the effort. It's a little different, um, but I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it. So um, we talked about, we're gonna do the welcome and agreements. Um, and we did already a, a check in earlier. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're jumping right to the fourth part here. We're gonna do the work or the, the discussion rounds. That's what we're jumping to now. So guidelines are similar. When you do this with your students, I've known some teachers when they're doing virtual circles, they'll tell the kids to pick their own talking piece. So when it's their turn, they're gonna grab their stuffed animal, they're gonna hold it and they're gonna walk or their kitty cat or whatever it is. Um, and, uh, and so that's just fun for them. They put it down next to them and when it's their turn, they pick it up. Um, speak from the heart. We're not, um, no, you know, no judgment here. You're gonna listen from the heart. Don't worry if you're gonna know what to say. Just say what comes to mind. You're not gonna need to prepare anything. And you're gonna say just enough and without feeling rushed. All right, so this is another handy tool. If you are doing this with your class, some teachers are making a, a circle seating chart like this. This is one that I made for a meeting I'm going to um, soon. Uh, this is a PBIS team at, at, at high school. And we're gonna do a check-in circle. And so I put everybody's name in a circle and I'm gonna tell them we're gonna go clockwise or we'll go counterclockwise. If you already know who's in your class, you can make this ahead of time and you can even teach the kids if Brian is absent, then Shauna knows she goes right after Jessica. That's really simple. So they have a visual to follow and they kind of feel like they're in class. You know, they can kind of feel like they're a community again. Well, we don't have that. So what we're going to do, and this is something that you could do too, is you do have a list. When you are in um, a Google Meet or a Zoom, you have a list um, on the side uh, of, your, of your screen. And that's how we're going to go. So we're going to actually go alphabetical by first name. Um, and so the first question in our discussion round is, what did you notice about the circle video that you watched? So we're going to start with Amanda. Amanda, you can unmute and share what you thought. Um, so I noticed, I watched the elementary one, um, that students were engaged. Um, I loved how the teacher integrated second step into the community yeah. circle and really made that personal connection. And then I noticed at the ending to her closing how the students started giggling and that connection that they made with their peers. Okay. All right, uh, Charles. Um, I noticed that uh, how uh, in good relationship the kids seem to be with each other. Um, I, when they did that closing in class thing, I was anticipating that, you know, oh, I don't touch that person, but they all just seem to be really in good relationship and jiggly and fun. Right. Good. Okay. Uh, Renee. I noticed um, that they passed for those who didn't want to share and that um, they could connect with how they were feeling with uh, from one to 10 and finding things that they could relate to those numbers. And I noticed um, in the elementary video that it was a little heavy at one point and kids were talking about some serious things um, and that nobody reacted. Like the teacher didn't say, oh no, or, you know, the kids could just hold it. And it was just kind of beautiful in that way. And I always touch when I see that, that whoever you are, however you are is safe here. And I, I loved that. Okay, next question. We're gonna, um, this time, um, this is nice to do in a circle, you switch directions. So this time we're gonna start with Renee. Renee, what are ways that you currently establish relationships with kids in your class now? Um, what I've done uh, is like a morning greeting oh, that um, it's 
um, when they come in the door, they would have um, um, hello, a hug, a uh, handshake, um, high five, and then I would let them do that. And so that's like a nice way to like start the day and um, um, to have them feel welcome. So that's what I'm All doing. Right, sure. Okay. Great. Um, Thanks. When I was a teacher and principal, um, I used some of the many techniques that we used in circles. We'd use actually for academic discussions. Uh, so they would mm -hmm. practice that way of being in relationship with each other on interpersonal things, and they would could to have them extended into talking about the topic of math or history or whatever. Okay, great. And Amanda. So this year's a little different because I've in the past I've used circles. Um, but this year, if I'm picking up students for intervention or um, pushing in, I just I always make sure and I ask the student how they're doing. Or if, if I'm picking up a student and we're walking back to my classroom, I just I make an effort. We talk the entire time about their weekend um, or how they're doing. So it's looked a little different this year, but just trying to make those personal connections first whenever I whenever I first see a student. Okay. And for me, um, the way I establish relationships, I visit schools a lot um, because I'm a trainer and consultant. I do things like I notice their shoes. I'll notice their shirt. Um, I'll ask them for help, um, you know, where to get something, where to go, where to find someone. And then I'll start asking them a little bit about school or their thoughts about how it's going or anything that would kind of help give me a clue as to how the school climate or culture is um, in a very respectful way. But it is something that I miss that I'm not at a school right now. Okay, last question is, how do you think you can get consistency in facilitating circles at your school? You know, maybe the first question is, do you think you could do this for yourself? And then could you... Um, how do you think that could work to get more people doing circles? So this time we'll go back in the original order, alphabetically starting with Amanda. Um, as far as at our school site, I think teachers are very open. I think a lot of teachers already use some form of the circle um, in the morning when the students first come in. But I think just exposure, more exposure to um, training and restorative practices and seeing it in action, I think will really get teachers on board and consistent. Great. Uh, Charles. Well, um, I, I just think we need to find a way to uh, build a pathway for this for people who are new to it or maybe resistant. I'm wondering how we can get this as part of the school culture so that people feel comfortable maybe mm -hmm. listening to this as well to watch it in action and, and all right, Renee. Um, I would say also, um, like Amanda, more exposure and also kind of like a a timeline of like how would you start like beginning of the year, and then mm -hmm. they'll keep it going, having something consistent. Maybe not in the same way, but consistent that they could um, have a routine. Um, as the year goes on. Good. I think for me, what I've found helps with getting school-wide implementation is scheduling. A lot of teachers don't feel like they have permission to do this. Um, where, where are they going to fit it in in the instructional minutes? So having like a community time set aside in every classroom, um, whether it's elementary and it's a daily chunk of 20 minutes, um, that they can alternate between classroom circles and teach a PBIS lesson and then teach uh, some sort of social emotional learning where they have time that they're allowed to do that. I think that's worked. And then um, in high school, I see like advisory or homeroom work really well for that. So it's scheduled in so people know that they can do it. And that's how I've seen consistency. So to wrap up um, our circle, um, we are going to do a check. And the checkout is. I want you to share one thing 
that you most appreciated about that process? And the process I'm talking about is the circle that you just participated in. But you can say about the general training, that's fine. But mainly kind of, what did you appreciate about what you just experienced? Um, start this time, um, Renee, we'll go backwards again. Renee, can you share one thing that you most appreciated? And it can be just one word if you want. Um, I shared um, what I most appreciated is just having the time to say without necessarily being interrupted and then the order how it went one way where I was at the end, but then at the, the next time it was a different way. Okay, great. Uh, Charles, what did you appreciate? I appreciated just the positive attitude that everybody brought to this. Um, it's great to have people who are already emotionally on board. And Amanda. I appreciated um, just the structure and the integration of how to how to lead community circles with the actual practice of going through a circle itself. Right. What I appreciated is willing people to try something really new. This is most of you have run a circle in your classroom. This is really different. And running a circle virtually, you have to be a little different. You are. Um, uh, you are going to be um, keeping people kind of a little more structured in a way. Um, and so I really appreciate that. And um, the last thing we're going to do the closing, and I'm just going to read um, one of my favorite quotes from Dr. Martin Luther King. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And we're doing restorative justice after all. And, but you can always um, email me at laura at lauramoyman.com. And I can get those resources to you and answer any questions that you have.